Let's work out some examples of calculating second order Taylor polynomials or quadratic Taylor polynomials. For the first example, let's approximate the function g of x equals 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed by a quadratic function around x equals negative 1. According to the formula at the right, we just need to calculate g, its first and second derivative, and then evaluate them at x equals negative 1. g of negative 1 is 1 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 cubed, which is 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4, which is negative 2. g prime of x is 0 for the first term, plus 2, which is a derivative of 2x, plus 6x, which is a derivative of 3x squared, plus 12x squared, which is a derivative of 4x cubed. So g prime of negative 1 is 2 minus 6 plus 12, since negative 1 squared is 1, which is equal to 8. One more derivative, the second derivative of g. The derivative of 2 goes away, the derivative of 6x is 6, and the derivative of 12x squared is 24x. g double prime at negative 1 is 6 plus 24 times negative 1, or minus 24, which is negative 18. Plugging these values into the formula, we determine that p2 of x is equal to g of negative 1, which is negative 2, plus g prime of negative 1, which is 8, times x minus a, a is negative 1, so x minus a negative 1 is the same thing as x plus 1. And now the quadratic term. The second derivative, which is negative 18, divided by 2 is negative 9. So we have 9 times x minus a negative 1, or x plus 1, squared. If you multiply this out and combine like terms, you get negative 9 x squared minus 10x minus 3. So this is the second order Taylor polynomial. to the function g of x around x equals negative 1. Now if you compare g of x to p2 of x, you'll notice that the quadratic approximation is not the same thing as just erasing the cubic term. The reason we can't just erase the cubic term to get a quadratic approximation is that the term 4x cubed does change the curvature of g, and so we have to take it into account. The function g of x has many different quadratic approximations, depending on the point at which you calculate the quadratic approximation. If we calculated p2 of x at around a different point, for example around x equals 2, we get a completely different answer. But this fact should already be familiar to you. If you calculate a tangent line to a function, you'll get a different tangent line, depending on the point at which you make the approximation. We can use the Taylor polynomial applet to illustrate the quadratic approximation to our example function, as well as see how the quadratic approximation will depend on the choice of our point A. In this applet, the function is called f of x rather than g of x, and we specified that a equals negative 1 by typing negative 1 in a box here. 
the app that automatically calculates the second order Taylor polynomial. It's second order because we chose n equals 2. Here it shows the quadratic term as 18 divided by 2 factorial, but 2 factorial is just 2. It's 1 times 2. And so 18 divided by 2 is 9 like we got. The graph of the function is the thick green curve, and the Taylor polynomial is the thin blue curve. We can see that the blue curve is a good approximation to f right around the point x equals negative 1, but clearly is pretty bad as we get far away from negative 1. If we zoom out further, We can see that in this case it does a pretty good job for values of x less than negative 1, but eventually starts to depart from the graph of the function. If we change the point a around which we calculate the Taylor polynomial, we see that we get a very different function. You can see this difference both by the algebraic expression for p2 of x and by the graph. If we make a exactly equal to 0, then you'll notice that the second order Taylor polynomial is exactly the same thing as the function if you erase the cubic term, because 6 divided by 2 factorial is 3. But away from the point x equals 0, we get a very different quadratic approximation than we get from erasing the cubic term. Let's calculate another example. Let's calculate the second order Taylor polynomial to the exponential function around 0. This time let's use t as our independent variable and call our function h of t. Since we'll calculate the second order Taylor polynomial around t equals 0, we need to calculate h and its derivatives at 0. In this case, the derivatives are easy. h prime of t, the derivative of the exponential function, is the function itself. And therefore, the second derivative, h double prime of t, is also just the function itself. This means when we evaluate h and its derivatives at t equals 0, we get the same number. h of 0 is e to the 0, which is 1, and similarly h prime of 0 equals 1, and h double prime of 0 equals 1. This means that the second order Taylor polynomial is h of 0, which is 1, plus h prime of 0, which is 1, times t minus 0, plus h double prime of 0, which is 1, divided by 2, times t minus 0, squared. So the Taylor polynomial is 1 plus t plus t squared over 2. Sometimes people like to give Taylor polynomial problems like the following. Approximate ln of 1.1, or maybe they might say ln of 0 0.9, using a quadratic approximation. What does this mean? The idea is to use a Taylor polynomial around a nearby point that can be evaluated by hand. So for either of these two examples, the idea is to use a equals 1. Since ln of 1 is easy to evaluate, and it's close to either 1.1 or 0 0.9. Let's calculate the second order Taylor polynomial to the natural logarithm around x equals 1. Well, the first derivative, d dx of ln of x, is 1 over x. So the second derivative, d squared dx squared, of ln of x, is the derivative 
of 1 over x, which is the derivative of x to the minus 1. So therefore, it's equal to negative 1 times x to the negative 2, or negative 1 over x squared. This means the second order Taylor polynomial around x equals 1 is ln of 1. But ln of 1 is just 0. So we get a 0 plus the derivative 1 over x evaluated at x equals 1. So that's another 1 times x minus 1 plus the second derivative evaluated at x equals 1, which is negative 1, over 2 times x minus 1 squared. So therefore it's equal to x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared over 2. Now we can approximate our values ln of 1.1 .1, or ln of 0 0.9. ln of 1.1 is approximately equal to p2 of 1.1. And if you plug in 1.1 into this formula, you'll get 0 0.095. Or if you were asked to approximate ln of 0 0.9, you could plug 0 0.9 into our second order Taylor polynomial and if you did this, you would get negative 0 